we are back once again with the Ted Lasso After Show. This is Sean. And this is Chris. And tonight we're talking about episode six titled Sunflowers. A uh, really good episode. Really good. This one. was, I, I think I messaged you because I, I watch it before you do. I watch it on th- Tuesday nights. You watch it when it comes out on Wednesdays. Yeah. Uh, I think I messaged you that night or early the next morning saying this was a top five lasso episode for me, if not higher. Like, I can't think of like how I've got them all ranked. But yeah. like this one felt like a return to form. Maybe top three. I loved it. I even it was kind of in the same vein almost as the uh, Coach Beard episode, kind of the crazy psych- psychedelic one that just followed him the whole night. But this one made sense. Um, but this one made sense. And it followed the whole team. Yes. And uh, it just was so fitting, you know, that they were in Amsterdam. And uh, boy, just a great episode. Yeah, this was this was fun. And it, and it started it moved everyone's storyline along. Like it started pushing everything in the direction that we know we need to get to. So we actually have a, a, a proper finale. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they made it easy for us as far as, cause you know, we like to break it up by a character and kind of a, uh, you know, plot beat, uh, but they, yeah, it, it seems like each group of characters had their own adventure <laughs> yeah. throughout the night. <laughs> Um, let's start out with Jamie and Roy. Some, some spending some quality wait, wait. time together. We got Bro- uh, Boondy made it. He said he oh. may not make it, and he made it. Well, welcome, hey Boondy. <laughs> yeah, you are here. Oh yeah, let's get some. Uh, let's get some comments. You guys were good enough to comment even before we went live here. Uh, Boondy said, uh, "Don't know if he makes it. Uh, this was a really last great lasso episode. It fleshed out all the characters' problems. Yeah, and I'm sure you fellas will talk about this more for sure." And then he mentioned some total football, which is a takeaway, you know, with, with Ted's journey. Um, total football. Oh, wait, I think I missed one here. Uh, total football. You're good. Oh, here we go. Total football is a Dutch system, was made famous in the 1970s by legendary coach Rhinus or Renus Michaels or Michelle's. Sorry, my pronunciation probably stinks there. And the <laughs> ir- irrepressible Johan Cruyff. Once again, my We're apologies. Gonna go with it. It's Dutch. <laughs> and and where was this episode located in Amsterdam? Right, right in exactly. Amsterdam. And and, um, and the sunflower dealing with the state flower back here. I yeah, know, yeah, sunflower. Um. Also, total football is a Dutch system. It was made famous in the 1970s. Oh yeah. By okay. Yeah, we got that part here. Oh, Michelle. Michelle was nice enough to drop a comment too. I may not be able to make the show live. Uh, but in the episode signs, I noticed Trent had a rainbow coffee mug. Oh, I, I didn't notice that. Did you? I completely missed that. I, I was completely oblivious. I, I I think you called the turn with Trent. Yeah. But I, I still, I mean, I liked your theory. I didn't, I didn't see it until it actually manifested in front of us uh, during this episode. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that was, it felt right. You know what I mean? Cause I think I made the comment. It wouldn't, it would feel kind of weird if Trent's a straight guy to like come out and be like, Hey, you should, you know, be, but coming from somebody who has that life experience, that yeah. makes a lot more sense. That feels yeah. better. Yeah. We're going to dive into that a little bit, a little bit later, but no, yeah. that's like you said, before we got talking about, you know, our comments here, which you guys love. Yes. Uh, but Roy and Jamie's relationship and the way that they've been building from season one to where they are now, it's almost I think it's beyond a coach player. I think it's almost. Are they becoming friends? Friend, I was going to go a step further. I think Roy is almost a father figure to mm. Jamie. I think mm-hmm. Jamie actually looks up to him now because in past episodes, you wouldn't have had them apologizing to each other for being dicks. And they both apologize for, to each other. So that they respect each other. They look at each other on different levels and they like each other's company. Yeah, I think that's fair, especially with Jamie's relationship with his dad. Um, there's probably a, a hole there that he's filling with uh, not only Roy, but in some ways with Ted too, as far as just like with guidance and having somebody like believe in you and yeah. you know, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I, I can, I can see that for sure. They were so funny. This episode, this these two. episode with those two. Oh my God. I watched, I mean, I watch all the episodes multiple times. Yeah, and there's a scene that I just I, I laugh. I just can't stop laughing about this scene. But before we get to that, I mean, Roy's great in this. I mean, when he he's still lamenting the fact that he screwed up with Keely. Yeah. And he's standing in front of this reporter and he's like, this is fake. You're fake. 
everything here is fake. <laughs> I know you texted me saying that this was a great episode, and I as soon as I started watching it, that was like almost the first scene, and that made me laugh out loud. And Roy was so funny, and um, the how oh the the player I forget the player's name that was standing next to him, but he's uh, he's of the he's from Amsterdam or whatever, yeah. and he was like, "This is great," or something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was great. Um, Kate says they've both matured as people. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And you can see that shine through in this episode, the way they treat each other. Um, Roy's good. I, I love how the tables flip in this episode. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, where uh, Jamie is kind of uh, almost mentor to Roy a little bit, yeah. getting him to ride the bike and stuff. Yeah, you might as yeah, well just play the clip because we're yeah. we're going to we're going to get there. There we go. OK, here. sit up, look up. Straight back up, but straight back up. Put your feet on the pedals. Put your feet on the pedals. That's it. Good now, pedal. Put now, pedal. Put your foot on the pedal. All right, okay, all right, all right, okay, all right. I'm never gonna stop the rain. Come the bike. Pick it up in an angry way, man. Good lad. Pedal, 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 pedal. That's it. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I love um, it. And I don't know if it's because I'm so recent to teaching my daughter how to ride a bike and I've seen the kind of lean, not the, the deadpan fall. I think that's what makes me laugh even more. Just the, the stiff board just boom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's kind of that's right up your alley. Uh, some physical comedy there. Oh, it's good. Is... And uh, give it up to the actors because that was uh that's tough. <laughs> he was oh, straight up on that bike and just, just totally falls over. Straight over. <laughs> yeah. Um I was going to say some underlying uh, Roy Keeley progression too. You started to talk about it, but I mean, Keeley was really not even barely in, in this the one episode. character that basically booted on this episode. And, and I think they had no choice because if yeah. they're going to give us something from Higgins, which we'll get into later, they had to go ahead and move another character out. And her yeah. character was the one that kind of got shuffled. Now I bet you we'll get a lot of her next episode, a lot of Nate next episode. Right. But since they gave us so much of Higgins and so much of the team themselves, they couldn't go much. I mean, it wasn't already an hour episode. So, isn't it funny that Nate also made an appearance in this episode just briefly in the American bar? It that, yeah, you know, it freaked Ted out. That was great. Yeah, that was funny. Um, but it, it's just one of those things. Oh, Madeline comes in. Madeline, welcome. Uh, I think they're more like brothers, right? With I think I feel that way too. With Jamie teaching Roy how to ride a bike and Roy supporting Jamie becoming the best he can be. Kind of like um, an older brother, younger brother. Yeah, and yeah, that's, I know, that's I the that's dynamic a more that I kind of like. on than the father figure set up. Um, but yeah, the the stuff with Keely, I mean, you mentioned here when uh, Keely goes off, you know, she's talking with Rebecca. She wishes she could join her uh, on their little adventure in Amsterdam overnight. But she's going to go hang out with uh, Jack in a private plane or something like something. Yeah, they're going up to yeah. see the Roy Borealis because the Mr. Roy Borealis is. It sounds sounds pretty uh sounds pretty romantic, Norway, honestly. <laughs> well, and this is all within earshot of Roy, uh, who sees that she's taking off and she's gonna go enjoy herself with somebody else. And uh he kind of you know laments to Rebecca. And uh what did Re Rebecca say that she's oh, going she's, off with someone that's somebody that believes oh how she put it that believes, believes she they deserve her. them. Yeah, right. Uh, which is like kind of a direct shot at Roy with him standing right there. But I mean, he can't deny it. Like no. it, it was his doing. So, um, but yeah, that was some, some growth there. He scared at himself out of a good thing. Right. Exactly. And I, yeah, there's some undertones here as far as why Roy is so, uh, I mean, Roy is always cantankerous. Like he, that's just his character. But yeah. he seems to be extra so, like in this episode. Or we're learning something... things like why he didn't get the chance to learn how to ride his bikes. He went off to Sutherland, and his yeah. uh, granddad was going to go ahead and teach him. And his granddad passed before he was able to get back. And he never he never decided to learn how to ride a bike because there was connections to it with, I guess, the relationship that we just don't, we never heard about. I love the connection, too, and the callback to his relationship with his grandfather, because I think that was in the episode where they were burning stuff. They were sacrificing stuff to get rid of the ghosts. Oh, back in, in the, season uh, one. Yeah. The therapy where he brought up some kind of thing that he wanted to burn that was like a blanket or something uh, that was like when he was fun, like the last time he saw his grandfather. So some kind of story like that. And it was like the first time we saw Roy open up. The <laughs> real Roy. Like, yeah, it was like jarring. Yeah, I remember that. 
Uh, let's see here. Roy gets Jamie off the bus, starts running. Oh, yeah. So they're all deciding on what to do. The team's like, yeah, Ted, you know, pumped. Ted says no curfew. The team freaks out. Yeah. And all of a sudden, Jamie's happy. And <laughs> Roy writes, uh, Tart off the bus. <laughs> Yeah, so they start running throughout the city, and eventually, um, I mean, I think Roy starts regretting <laughs> that because well, Jamie's just running all day issue. long, right? Yeah, you can't. I mean, you start seeing him hobbling, and it's it's his knee. It's what basically made him retire. Yeah, and Jamie's doing like you know those side things and cartwheels, and he's sightseeing the skinniest bridge. Uh, yeah, uh, another house, I guess. You know, they're just kind of going all over the place, and Roy's about had enough of it. Keely still looked at Roy lovingly. Oh, I might have missed that. Did yeah. Keely look back at Roy? Yeah, oh, she did okay. Because, uh, she thanked Roy for doing it. Doing oh, that's right. I He's do only remember doing that. the interview because yeah. Keely wants him to do the interview. <laughs> right. He, he does not, it, but yeah, he's, he's not, not very good doing at it. it because he wants to do it. Yeah. Well, then there's like the selfie. The guy's trying to take a selfie and he moves and walks away before he clicks. The... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was good stuff. Um, I got I'm not surprised, but the actor that uh, plays uh, Jamie, like he was running, sprinting. He was like he did like a full cartwheel through the yeah. city streets. Like he was just uh, he was rare to go. That, he was pumped. That, that scene must that whole episode shooting for those two must have been fun. It must have been, yeah. Just because take between the 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 slapstick humor they have with them just kind of physical and falling off the bike and Roy picking up the bike and chucking it at him and yeah, and pointing at like the windmills. Like everything here is fake. It's like Disneyland. Even yeah. that windmill is fake. Yeah. He's like, Jamie's like, we're going to go see a windmill. Right. <laughs> and we get these touching backstories. Like, they share a little bit about their past, each of them together. Um, you know, they grab these bikes. He, uh, Jamie has a laugh at Roy's expense. Him and the, uh, the, the I guess, the homeless guy that got them he, the, he bikes. the bikes. the bikes. He was paying him just, for the stolen bikes. <laughs> just laughing at Roy. Just, you know, it, the, yeah, like you said, the tables have turned, right? Yeah. <laughs> he takes advantage of that. Uh, but it was touching. I mean, they have that. I mean, the way Jamie was like, once he heard that story about his grandfather and stuff, he was like, we're not leaving here tonight without you learning how to ride a bike. Like, we're doing this thing. Yeah. Um, I, and, and I, I love the, the uh, like, when Roy was like, <laughs> you're right. Here. Yeah. He's like, this um, is happening and I have no no say in the matter. <laughs> Yeah, and they they go and they they ride bikes uh, like all night. They go and they find a windmill, and they're the last ones to arrive at the bus in the morning. <laughs> and it's funny because Roy's on the back is Jamie's on the back of Roy's bike. I think it was. Oh was it really? Flipped? Oh, it was one of the funny. other. Yeah, yeah. One of, he lost the bike somewhere. <laughs> oh, that's right. No, no, no. Roy was on the back of Jamie's because Roy crashed off the side of the path. Remember? Oh yeah. See, that, that was, was funny too. That just got me laughing. Like that's just they're carrying over that I can't ride a bike well. Yeah, the whole episode. Yeah, really done really well. Some good character stuff between those two. And that's I the kind it. of thing that I was hoping to see between those two. Yeah, like you were saying though, we learned some backstory. We learned, yeah, you know, Jamie was like, I came here first with my dad because he was trying to get back with his mom. It was right. like, you know, it was, it was for you know a soccer game. He was kind of putting it behind, then he wound up in a red light red light district. And yeah, Roy was like, Was that tragic? You know, just kind of that back and forth. And he came back with his mom, but he was always, always kind of thinking of his dad. His dad's kind of always loomed large over his life no matter where he was if he's you know playing with uh where do you go man you i think it was he went in the yeah, second yeah. season right uh, it was and then he came back to um uh, the richmond so he was looming large over him richmond and now in really in reality he's looming large over him right now when they're in amsterdam because it's he's in that city and he's thinking of him while you know the whole situation is going on yeah and i just i like how I like that dynamic and I like how they both realize like when Jamie like apologized for being a dick back there when he found that he couldn't ride a bike and found mm -hmm. out about his granddad. And then J and Roy went as far as saying, you know, he, he apologized because he's projecting all of his anger and all of his angst at Jamie. Yeah. And yeah. Jamie's kind of his whipping boy. And, and we, we've kind of seen that, but we wonder if that would ever come like be verbalized. And, and there was. Uh, Michelle is here. Hi, guys. Hi, Michelle. Thanks for hey, joining made us it. once again. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. We appreciate you guys coming up every week and uh, joining the discussion. It, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, thanks for working with us, too, being a little flexible. <laughs> yeah, it's just another one of those weeks, right? Um, okay, so I think that kind of concludes the, the Jamie and Roy stuff. That was some good stuff. And I just want to watch him fall off the bike again. Can we watch that one more time? Yeah, that why was, not? Just that's do it again. Hilarious. Sit up, look up, and pedal. Rain falling 
straight back up. We're straight back up. Put your feet on the pedals. Put your feet on the pedals. That's it. Good now. Pedal. Put now pedal. Up the bike. Pick it up in an angry way, man. Good lad. Pedal. 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 That's it. Aye. That's forever going to make me smile. I can't help it. It just makes me smile. Brett Goldstein falling over off his bike like that. Just, yeah. It's just... Oh, and man, physical it's comedy. Uh, Kate here. I She says, I really liked how the show covered a lot of Amsterdam facts and culture. I live in Wales, UK, and we visited Amsterdam for the first time a couple of years ago. Yeah, you get a real good... And as a, a couple of, you know, Americans here, we... You know, I've never been to Amsterdam. Yeah. I, you know, you haven't. Um, but uh, it, it felt that way. It felt like a, a nice little slice of uh, slice of Amst Amsterdam. Besides just the, like, stereotypical things that you hear all the time. You know yeah, what I mean? Red as light far as, you know, weed. red light that's, district that's or Americans drugs. Or, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, the stuff you, you hear. But it's, like, just, like, the like the, the houseboat and, like, just the, uh, the all the, the like, bicycles. And, and, yeah, yeah, it seemed to be, like, a nice little look into what the day-to-day -day life actually well, the looks like that, there. The whole reason Higgins went to the red light district, that, that was a fun little thing. I love yeah. how everyone thought, we'll get to it. But he said he was going to the red light district. Everyone looked at each other like, ha, nah. <laughs> <laughs> The team, Rebecca, Keely, all of them. Nah. Okay, yeah. Man. Let's uh let's move on to what Michelle kind of mentioned earlier when she brought up uh Trent's uh rainbow mug. This was a nice little once again, a couple of characters. Um, and this is something that we called before, like Trent and Colin, this needs to happen. This whatever it's gonna end up being, a confrontation, a dialogue between the two. They've kind of held on to that for a couple episodes, We mm -hmm. and but we're revisiting here it here they now. Nailed it. They, yeah, they, they could good. not have done this any better than they actually did. Yeah. I love the, you know, Colin leaving the, the team, saying he's got stomach issues, and, and then sneaking out, and Trent seeing him sneak out, and he kind of follows him. Yeah. He follows him to the bar, and he basically calls him out in the bar, and you know, Colin still put that front on, and he, then he kind of meets him in the outside the bar, and he says, "I know, right? I I just know I haven't said anything to anybody, and why do you think I wouldn't say anything to anybody?" And then that right. just sparks that long conversation, which was, like I said, it was it was phenomenal. It was good, and it was open and honest, and like I, I feel Colin really appreciated it because this is probably such a relief for Colin. You, you imagine that he hasn't been able to talk about this to not only his teammates, but maybe a lot of folks in his life. It's probably still a secret. Um, so for him to be able to open up, you could see that weight be lifted off of him. And the way they just kind of sit by the water and like talk about it. And Trent talks about his experience with, yeah, he I guess he came out twice. And the second time his mom accepted it. And yeah. I guess apparently they talked about his daughter as well. And you know how, I guess everything is good now. So it, it shows Colin that there is a light. Yeah. There is there is somewhere good to be. You know, to, it's not all bad because right. he even says that he's he's living two lives: professional life and his, mm -hmm. his personal life. And there's Doctor uh, Doctor Sharon, Sharon basically told yeah. him there's an there's an ache inside of him to make those two one. And he even said that he he would like to believe that everyone on the team would have no issue with it, but he doesn't want to be a spokesman. He doesn't want to be a spotlight. He doesn't want any of that. He just wants to be Colin on the team. And it's so we even get a mention of Dr. Sharon. I feel like this episode is a culmination of like the past two seasons and all the episodes leading into these, this episode this season. Like it really depends on you to like to be a Ted Lasso fan and to be in it to be like in this episode and draw everything out of it that you can. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Madeline says, got interrupted. Did you guys mention the song that was playing during the bicycle scene? Yeah, I know that's from a movie, Raindrops Keep Falling My Head, where the two characters are um, riding on a bicycle. That might be a little bit before my time. I don't know. Madeline, let me know what movie that is. I know that's a famous cinematic thing. I know the um, song. I don't know movie-wise. or or Because 99% of the time, there's relevance to a song yeah. to the actual theme of the show. Now, I know it from a Simpsons episode where Homer is pushing Marge on a bike and they play that song, but I'm sure they got it from somewhere else. It's right so there. let me know. Say, uh, oh, Tom. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid reference. Okay. There Excellent. we go. Uh, well, I think this might not only be, there might have been a, another Butch and Sundance reference 
I'm sure there was probably some other either mentioned by Ted or Jamie and Roy, some other Butch and Sundance There's reference. There's so many reference. things. It's hard. Yeah. Like you said in past shows, it's hard to gather. Even when watching it multiple times, it's hard to also, you know, get all of that stuff, you know, together. Yeah. Uh, Boondy taking off. Got to go last with family. Love y'all. I'll listen to the replay. Boondy, we will see you next time, buddy. Yeah, Thanks for joining go, us. Yeah, join us for the, you know, the finale of uh, uh, Manda. Yeah. yeah. Be delayed. It's going to be on Saturday night because I got a family thing going on, you know, kids. You're right. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was uh it was one of those things where um, you know, it was it was night nice, it was a good conversation. It was yeah, like you said, that was spot on perfect as far as development between those two characters. And I'm curious to see where Colin goes from here. I mean, do we see him announce it or, or come out to the to the rest of the, the crew? Um I'm curious if he's like confident enough through that conversation to kind of make next steps, you know. I don't know when they'll tell. I don't want them to rush it. Right. I like the idea that they're those two now have a a friendship or an, an understanding between the two of them. Because I think a friendship developed yeah. once they started open up. They started talking to each other. Because I don't think anyone knows Trent is guy either on the team uh, and yeah. within the team. I don't right. think anyone knows. So right. those two kind of have their own kind of secret type setup between the yeah. two of those. So. Yeah, I want them to kind of drag that on. Like I said, I I don't I agree with him. I don't think he needs to be a spokesperson. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't think everyone needs to be because even in the show, he's not front and center. He's right. not one of the, he's not a personality on the in the show that would want that limelight. Mm -hmm. And that's probably because he's been, you know, setting back and kind of fading into the team because of, you know, not telling anybody. But yeah, there was a lot of that. I mean, even going as far as you know, Trent saying, you know, the, those bells right there and Frank heard. Just those, yeah. those, those little nuggets. Yeah. That's another one of those Amsterdam things that I, I didn't know. And just another connection of somebody who was staying hidden. You know, I, I mean, like the mm -hmm. Anne Frank, I mean, she physically was staying hidden from the world. <laughs> and as he's kind of emotionally and like, you know, uh, staying hidden from the rest of his teammates and the people in his life as far as who the real him is. And yeah, I saw this connection. That was like, really, that was really great dialogue between those two. And then he wants vanilla vodka. Ugh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you see him loosen up and they go back to that original bar and they, was that the original bar. Yeah, I think it was. I think they just went back to the same bar that they left the first okay. time and they were, they were just dancing and having a good time. And yeah, it looked like a lot of fun. And uh, they eventually make their way back to the bus the next morning, yeah, too. Yeah, the next, yeah, next morning. <laughs> you seem like maybe they were pretty worse for wear, though. They were probably had a pretty bad hangover, I'd imagine. Um, and so, yeah, that was great between those two characters. Let me tell you, I feel like the meat of the episode, the star of this episode, Rebecca had a heck of a time this episode, yes, man. This was, this was great. Now, okay, no, I'm going to hold it. The way it ends, I, I, I've got questions. I want to see what everyone kind of thinks, but mm -hmm. let's just get there. I loved how Sassy caught her. She's just kind of walking, and Sassy's so like, something's wrong with my stomach. Something's wrong with you. Something's yeah. not right. You're, you shouldn't be by yourself. You yeah. shouldn't be walking through the streets of Amsterdam. Something's not right. And <laughs> once again, another character, a sassy appearance. Like even if it's very small, either a mention or just a, a somebody over the phone. But the way they're bringing back everybody for this episode, it was just wow. It was great. Just, just connecting all the dots and all the lines and yeah. all the threads were all being pulled to make storylines move. And yeah. Would you have okay? If you've seen someone like Rebecca walking across the bridge, would you have the nerve just to whistle and to say want to say hi? I wouldn't have that. Bro. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. But I'm I'm not that guy who's clearly like, you know, six, five and living on a boat. And like, that's a man's man right there. <laughs> <laughs> Ex-military. Yeah, <laughs> he has the confidence to do that. I There's give it nothing. up. The fact that he just chucked his phone in the canal, too. I'm right. Like, yeah. That's that's a move right there. Good. <laughs> and it was a believable line because it's like even Rebecca, you can see Rebecca's like double checking in with herself the entire time like is this okay like is this guy like gonna you know do something nefarious like you probably have she probably has a true crime podcast just like going off in her <laughs> head, her head. <laughs> as she's like having her clothes dried and stuff but he walks that line of just being like you know you're you can leave if you want to or you can I stay the, like whatever I love the fact that when she got the shower he wasn't there yeah he gave her basically his house 
Right. So he gave her the respect to be able to get a shower without some weird guy waiting in the living room. Yeah. And he left tea and he went shopping for dinner. Yeah. And then came back. Right. So that I'm, just that. I, I'm curious the perspective of our um of our women viewers here if this is the kind of thing if they were also swooning along with Rebecca throughout this episode. Also, what kind of dryer takes two and a half hours? Maybe the kind of dryer that's on a houseboat. I don't know. Maybe it was very energy efficient, you know? <laughs> yeah, very energy efficient. <laughs> Holy smokes. Um, yeah, it was it walked that line. Honestly, I was being a bit seduced by by the guy. I did we even get his name? We never got his name. We never, never got told a name. Each other their names. Yeah. They, they have no clue who each other really were. Yeah. He was like, yeah, very smooth, very confident, but not in a like a uh, like a Don way. Juan. No, not in a like an overbearing kind of way. It was just like, I'm here living my life. I'd be happy to help you out. And while I'm helping you out, some things, there's a connection there. Yeah, he's yeah. like, you want it? Make your own drink. <laughs> so I thought that, yeah. thought that was great. <laughs> and I think Rebecca kind of appreciated that. Like, yeah, I can make my own damn drink. Yeah. yeah. I so. thought it was telling. I, I love the look on her face when he wasn't there and she started looking for him and mm -hmm. she walked down the hallway and she, she's seen his daughter's bedroom and the smile yeah. that came on her face. Yeah. Uh, the knickknacks on the wall for, I'm guessing from like his army days and things like that, that right. stuff was really good. So you can, you can see she was taking it in. She was letting her guard down and I think she was being cautious, but enjoying herself. Madeline confidence comes in all shapes and sizes. That's too true, Madeline. You're absolutely right. Size is about right. <laughs> yeah. As far as, yeah. Size two, like, you know, under six foot, five, nine or whatever. Like I said, I don't know if I would have the goal, but, you know, that guy certainly did. Um, oh, it was washer dryer combo. Thank you. Very helpful. Oh, okay. I figured they we really do have, take a yeah, long they're, time. They're, they're not com yeah, common for us. Uh, the momentary duet was adorable. Peggy, thanks for joining yes. us. Yeah, that was. Yeah. When he started saying, oh, was it the, uh, oh, what song was it? Oh, because he said. Oh, it was a Kenny Rogers song, but it was done, I guess, by, um, it, you know, it was like a Dutch version and, by an Andre artist there. Hayes, Hayes, or however you want to say it. Yeah, I'm, wow. I'm going to butcher it. Yeah. But. <laughs> you at least wrote it down. You had something. I just remembered the Kenny Rogers part. <laughs> yeah. um, and Michelle says, yeah, Mr. Houseboat was just smooth enough without being a pickup artist. Right. I was feeling it. Yeah, because he, he gave her the lecture of just leaving whenever she wanted to it's like she yeah. wasn't being kept there against her will he's like you know what you can put your wet clothes in the bag i'll call you an uber and be on your way but she like she just stays and she enjoys it and just has a good time with that hey leah b leah b joining us welcome here i predict rebecca will become a stepmom yeah i i was thinking we haven't said it yet but that's, that's something we need to talk about about the end of this episode well end of, end of this portion of the episode you're right. Because there's some wording that can be taken one way, could take it another way. It can be taken, it can be interpreted a bunch of different ways. So with us two being dudes and then having a bunch of women that watch our show with us, I kind of want to see what everyone thinks. I, yeah, for sure. Michelle agrees with Leah, though. You read my mind. Uh, Madeline also says his daughter's bedroom was a nice ad because didn't you think that that's how she could become a mother? Right. And that's part of that. Uh, then they put that twist at the end. Right. Um, and then Kate says, I thought that girly bedroom was going to mean that Rebecca would end up with a child by the end of the year. Uh, stepdaughter prediction, right? I think everybody's kind of on the same page with yeah. that. And that was, um, that's a nice way to kind of tailor that. So they end up, so they have a, honestly, a very romantic evening between a couple of strangers. They have a nice dinner. He like, he cooks. This dude's doing all the right things. Well, I mean, he, he fixed her, her, her ankles bleeding. So he puts a bandage on it. And he, and he plays off like, yeah, I want to clean it up, but I don't want blood on my floor. <laughs> <laughs> but then he pulls the All whole, right. like, uh, and this could be because he has a daughter and he does it, but he kissed her ankle after he bandaged it and called her off guard. Totally. But he was like, yep, force of habit. Sorry about that. Yeah. So uh, I don't know if that was a move or not. the daughter's bedroom that she's Right. Seen. Sure. Yeah. Um, and what? Yeah. They, they sing together. They have dinner together. She relaxes more. They drink together. She puts on uh, his ex-wife's outfit, which was a little that's like, OK, that's a step for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, you know, her, she basically passes out. She, well, I mean, her dress gets dry. 
Her stuff. Gets yeah, dry. and they, they dump the, the dryer, alcohol and they dump back their on it. Glasses of water in there, and they fill up another, some more wine and stay. Well, they're that. both vibing, right? They're both enjoying yeah. the company. What else is she going to do? She's having a good time with this guy. The team's gone till ten a.m. What are we going to do? Sit back in the hotel room by myself? Right. Sassy so, would have kicked her ass. Yeah, and <laughs> apparently she she got um enough alcohol that the next morning she wasn't sure if they had you know done anything, done anything or, not. or not. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is that the twist? Okay, yeah, so let's this, talk yeah, about this that. This is kind of what I want to talk about because when she asked him, "Did we do anything?" and he said, "Do anything," and he's then he's like, "No, no, did, that that wasn't the words." She didn't say do anything. She was like, "Did we?" Did dot we. dot dot. And her yeah, that's right. Did we exp expression? I I feel it's to be interpreted. Did we? You know, do the deed? Did, did we have did we intercourse? Yes. Right. Exactly. Um, and he says, no, he like, he, and you can see, I mean, he, he rubs her foot and when she's asleep, he puts blanket on and he goes to his bedroom yeah. or whatever. Like, but then when you she can... leaves after, after she kisses him, yeah, she gives him a pretty big like, goodbye kiss. But then he says, did we, oh yes, we did. Now Here's is he, the thing. Re is he I... referring to the evening in general or is he referring to something that is implied that they did sleep together? I didn't take that as they slept together. I, the, when she said it, that's how I implied it. And, and he took it and answered it, you know, truthfully. But after she left, I think he was looking and he was like, he was he was kind of uh, recontextualizing that question. Did we dot, dot, dot. And I think in his head, did we fall in love last night as far as just like what a night that was with a complete stranger? And he did was and, guess and, league. Gothlug? Whatever that word was. <laughs> yeah. I could have swore that would have been the title of this episode, but it wasn't. It didn't end up being that. Um, but I'm sure they were thinking about it. But that's what I, I'm thinking. Like, did we fall in love? And he says, oh, yes, we did to himself. Like, I I feel like this guy is, like, hooked, yeah, and he see, doesn't know what to what do now. what we need to do, now what needs to happen is she needs to put her worst detective on finding him. And her yeah. worst detective is Higgins. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Here, let's catch up on some comments here. Let's see. Oh, we're yeah, a little bit behind here. I think Rebecca's become with the twist, right? Okay. Uh, Amber, sorry I'm late. Lost track of time. No worries. We're an entire day late, Amber. So <laughs> yeah. I appreciate you joining us okay. at all. Amber, I've got that comment set aside so we can tell Sean exactly what you said about <laughs> Sassy. We'll, we'll talk about that here in a bit. Uh, Michelle says, yeah, I was thinking she could have gotten pregnant. Many women get pregnant during premenopause. Um, yeah, it's like not in that impossible. was my first feeling though. Like I looked at my wife and said, Did we just see or not see the psychic thing thing come true as if she's gonna be pregnant? Like she's right. gonna find out so many, you know, months down the road that uh oh, you know, dude's dad now, and I don't even know dude's name. <laughs> yeah, that's a problem. Uh let's see. Amber says, I think he may have meant that they had a connection. Though not necessarily physical. That's what I'm leaning there towards, Amber. Uh, Leah says, I think they meant, or I think he meant they fell in love or something. Yeah, that's exactly how I took that. Um, Madeline, though, I took that to mean they did the deed. Yes, so yeah, that was my first impression. Right. But the more we're kind of talking this through, and I, I love this for the, this community for that reason by itself, because what you think may not be what everyone else thinks. And there's, you know, other input. Uh, Griffin joining us once again. Thank you, Griffin. Uh, Griffin. This was a complete journey for me in the LGBTQ community and also in the psychedelic community and the female community. Here's my input. Mystery man is hot. Capital H O T. <laughs> His integrity is hot. To fair point. Yeah. That's what makes it hot, right? It was just like I mean, very. He, he was on point integrity. with everything. He was respectful. Yeah, the whole way through. There was not a it was not a disrespectful bone in his body throughout that whole episode. You know, the entire time that she was with him, too, I was just thinking back of what Roy told her last season when she was dating that other guy that she ran into. You deserve like a couple of episodes. better. Yeah, you deserve electricity is what he yeah, said. Yeah, yeah, like, That night is nothing but electric between those two. So, yeah. Oh, at, no, I, good Roy's callback. Words. Wow, look at you. Yeah. That, that makes perfect sense. Because we've seen <laughs> that dude in the season. Right, which just as a reminder of just like yeah, what a duddy so was. seen him, and now we have this connection of electricity back, you know, Man, these guys are great right in this show. They good, really right? Yeah, right. They I know. Really so far, season three, it's good stuff. Amber says, "Yes, thank you, Chris. Cannot wait to pop that." Oh, as far as yeah, the <laughs> thing. Well, I guess we'll get to that. 
um thank you all for your input there yeah this was uh, and that's what i was looking forward to is kind of some perspective on that whole thing because i was honestly this is a big episode for rebecca like yes. that's that's a it big was deal a, it was a great episode for rebecca because she's had parts and scenes in the episodes like she's she's never really had this much to do in an episode she had her things that were going yeah. on with sam and but that was never a a chunk of a, an episode like this episode was here right it was nice just seeing her letting her guard down letting her guard down but being cautious and then letting that cautious kind of was just kind of go away and letting herself have fun yeah because she, she said back when the way that uh rupert got her was rupert made her feel special yeah made her feel like she was the only one and that's exactly what this guy was doing in a very non and a, a non-stalking coming to the bar every single night kind of way right yeah where the she he just happened upon him honestly like she was in need he just happened to be there and he opened up his home to her to like fix the situation mm -hmm. and he was like full of integrity uh you know being an honest guy and just like cooking for her like you know making sure he was she was dry giving her privacy like all this stuff like this good here's the thing at the end though they don't get each other's names their phones are gone how does how do they reconnect if they do it all well, he's probably docked in the same spot. I doubt he moves. Yeah. So it's going to come down to that bridge. She's uh -huh. going to remember the bridge uh, where she, and they may be able to ping her phone from the last place it was before it, it went in the drink. I don't, I'm stretching it a little <laughs> bit here. <laughs> Maybe. I, I'm sure they can do it. I mean, they're able to write this stuff. Uh, Michelle says, yeah, speaking of callbacks, love how the team ended up having a pill. A pillow fight. <laughs> yeah, didn't they? They've done that in hotel rooms in the past, I think. Maybe that same episode they were watching The Iron Giant. Oh, remember Ted was like, okay, we either uh, do... <laughs> That's right. Ted gave him the option we could either have a movie night or a giant pillow fight, and they kept going back to the movie night. He was like, all right, once you do pillow fight, you're gonna... <laughs> you're not gonna go back. That's funny. Oh, um, Sam, wanted the, Sam wanted the movie night. Yeah, Sam wanted the movie night, too, yeah. <laughs> Amber says, I didn't think I'd like Rebecca moving on from Sam, but Boatman definitely earns approval. Uh, he took care of her and made her feel good and expect nothing in return. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Are um, we going to see any, count? Say, say for instance, there is some type of, uh, they find who he is and there is some type of like moving forward. Will we see regret from Sam? Maybe. Or do we think that's severed? I don't, I don't know. It depends on whether or not he's actually in a relationship with the uh, the restaurant with the chef. Because I feel like if he is, then Sam's kind of moved on at he's this point. He's already moved on himself. You know, he you can say one thing, like, I'll be waiting for you. But as soon as you meet somebody new that kind of takes that role, like, it's that's tough. So Yeah. You're not, can... put, you're not pausing your life, definitely, when there's something right in front of you. Right, yeah. Um, Kate call says, back to tea. Yes. Call back to oh tea was God. good. We right. didn't even talk. No, we haven't got to Ted yet. Okay. No, we're getting there. So a lot, a lot of folks to cover this episode, but I think that pretty much covers uh, oh, Rebecca. I love when she got back on the bus at the end of it. Oh, and she walks smitten. in and just falls in the back, and Ted yeah. asks her about text messages. Yeah, she yeah, said, yeah. My phone's at the bottom of a canal, and he's, mm -hmm. he's kind of asks, "Is that kind of a euphemism? What's going on here?" <laughs> <laughs> and she uh, starts singing, "Don't worry about a thing." It's just. It's so great. Yeah, in the beginning of the episode, she said she hated that song. It comes full circle where she's yeah. singing it out loud. Yeah. And once again, uh, that actress, she's a tremendous voice. So for her to like just pop up with singing a couple times in this episode, <laughs> that's good too. Um, Madeline says Sam is young. He'd bounce back. I agree. Sam's Sam's got good stuff going on in his life. He's good. Um, I think if Boatman is as good as we think he is, Sam will approve. He wants Rebecca to be happy. He's not heartless. Yeah. I, I believe, yeah, I agree with that. I think Sam would be happy that Rebecca's happy. Sam's full of integrity, too. Yeah, Sam's a good guy. And he just wants to watch a movie. <laughs> right. He doesn't want to go to any type of shows. <laughs> That's how much integrity he has. Yeah, I'd rather just, you know, watch a movie, you guys. Um, speaking, okay, so Sam's part of the rest of the team. They have kind of their own adventure, uh, kind of. <laughs> Do they? Do they? It never anywhere? really gets they off. I guess they nowhere. don't, no. <laughs> it never gets off the ground. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> they just spend the entirety of the episode arguing back and forth, taking votes, and I they love never go. Isaac, Isaac, when McAdoo's like, 
No, we're staying together. <laughs> One thing that I was hoping for out of this, because I think this was kind of played for laughs, and I don't know if we got really got anywhere as far as developing, because there is some sort of disconnect with the team right now as far as why they're on such a losing streak yeah. and with without them having Zava and think. I was hoping that McAdoo would really kind of take charge and it would almost be like a microcosm of like the rest of the season. Like if he, if Isaac's able to like take charge of this moment and be the team leader, the team captain and wrangle the guys up into one thing that would almost like um, spread into their games going forward, you know? Okay. Um, and I was hoping that that would, that we would, play with some of that but we, i don't feel like we got really got that i think in they were trying to, to go ahead and give us that within the ending of this with the pillow fight yeah it's basically getting rid of all that angst I, yeah I, I think that's where that was i think they gave us what you were looking for kind of in that matter because mcadoo was the one in control of the whole situation even though the, the whole situation was chaotic yeah pretty much the whole time out but everyone looked at him for direction if it was where they were going, what, what were they doing? If they were going two hours away to the party, if they were going to go downtown for a show, uh, yeah. or if they were going to go see a tulip, uh, <laughs> which uh, I would have Amsterdam, been. There could be there could be all types of different euphemisms. <laughs> Honestly, if I, I probably would have been that second vote with Danny. Like you know, I've heard nothing but beautiful things about these tulips. Let me go run through those. Hope beautiful tulips <laughs> be too much happiness. <laughs> I was with Danny in that. That sounded lovely. Uh, let's see here. Michelle says, I'm torn. I love Sam, but Boatman seems like he can hold his own with Rebecca for sure. Um, it's got to be a like, strong personality, and he has that strong personality. I think Sam is old enough to be able to go wit for wit with Rebecca. Sam is like, yeah, on the beginning of his life journey. You know what I mean? While the boatman has had his own like kind of full life up to this point, too. And I feel like him and Rebecca are meeting at a point in their lives where they're they come together as equals, as opposed to Sam, who's really just kind of starting out with things. Yeah. Um, Madeline says, agree with Amber. And Amber says, Sam is the Ted of the players. He's wholesome and isn't into the shows uh, or drinking, drugging at a party. He's just adorable. Yeah, we love we love Sam. Sam hasn't got enough play in the season. I was just going to say that. He hasn't done much this season just yet. But, I mean, there's time, right? We're only halfway through the season. So, uh, maybe we and see some more things. giving us our episodes per yeah. week. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Giving us a lot, to, lot a lot of meat on the bone. A lot of storytelling. A lot of a lot of direction. So, yeah. We yeah. know there's plenty of time left for, you know, everything that played itself out. Uh, one thing to mention here. That's kind of it as far as the team goes. They'll make it back to the bus the next morning, of course. Uh, Beard shows up as Piggy Piggy Stardust, right? <laughs> uh, that was a lot of fun. That was what a great what a great um, Halloween costume that'll be. Too. And he shows up uh, speaking Dutch. He's like, "Don't tell so and so." <laughs> and you know what's funny is that we had a glimpse into his life and his ability to have his own kind of crazy wild night, right? In that past episode, as much as that last season's episode of Beard's Night was was off the wall, like what we watching. Yeah. I kind of want to see what happened last I night. I know. <laughs> like, who? I mean, if, who knows what happened? If they gave happened. us, like, a five-minute, like, small YouTube video of what happened, yeah, that would be mind-blowing. That would be really funny. Uh, let's see here. Amber says, uh, the issue of Rebecca owning Sam's contract would be moot with Boatman. There's no power dynamic. They're just equals. R right. That's how I'm, I'm feeling about that, too. Uh, Madeline says the boatman also has a cheating ex spouse. Yeah, I forgot oh, to mention that connection. Yeah, they both went it's the same, same uh -huh. kind of. Part. Yep. And he said uh, he almost bringing it back to that. He said he almost destroyed his family, mm -hmm. and she almost destroyed the team in yeah. the same exact way. What was? Oh man, we got, I got to get back to Rebecca. Keep going. There's a line. Uh, let's see for. here. Michelle says, "Don't take Danny to the is it Kuchenhof." Famous park devoted to tulips. He'd lose it. I'd lose it. I would love. I would love. Honestly, I couldn't visit there without going. Okay, um, so real quick, I'm gonna stop you. There's yeah. a line that he said that connects Ted, Rebecca, and this dude. It didn't happen to me. It happened for me. Oh yeah, you know I didn't put that. I didn't uh, place that onto Ted's experience too. But because yeah. what Ted's going through with his ex-wife yeah. and. Henry and being away, what Rebecca's yeah. going through with the whole separation between her and Rupert, 
and now the guy that she just met. So this can be happening to her. You know what I mean? You can look at it in so many different ways. Right. That line, that line stood out to me. Didn't happen yeah. to me, it happened for me. What a great perspective to have too. Just if you were to take one little piece of, you know, life lesson nuggets out of this show, if if that's one lesson you can learn and take with you after the show is all done, to have that perspective where things aren't happening to me, but they're happening for me, I can embrace it and, and learn from um, the situation just as a part of life and yeah. move on. Yeah, like that's that's big stuff and that's hard. I mean, that's hard. It's easier said than done. Yeah. But like, yeah, that's that's, that's, a, that's a lassoism coming from somebody that wasn't Ted. Right. Yeah, true. Um, let's see here. Griffin says the T this episode dropped on 419, which is <laughs> yes! bicycle day. First time LSD was used by mistake. Fact, Google. Wow. Th hey, thank you for bringing those facts. I would not have connected any of that, but Griffin's nope, I, here. I, I didn't know. I knew to, I, I was being, I was treading carefully at work today because I wanted to send us some of you, like, uh, <laughs> you know, some, some gifts to people. I was like, yeah, no, I probably no, better not. Working, yeah. Working for the government. I don't think that's a good idea. Yeah. That's, that's probably safe. Better safe than sorry there. Uh, Amber says, good point, Madeline. I think that will create a trust between them, which makes them a stronger match. Yep. Uh, Maynard is the lightning piggy stardust. Um, oh, is the lightning piggy stardust. I don't, I don't know. He was, he was wearing lightning on the, um, on his outfit. That's for sure. Oh, Maynard and Maynard's back. Hey, Maynard. Yeah. Uh, Griffin, uh, Sam clearly stated he was staying in Richmond for himself. Yes, he, he did. Yeah. I, he was yeah. Clear about that. Yes. Right. He made it clear to because he was talking. I think he was talking to Ted and Higgins. He was looking at them. Yeah. But everyone knew he was talking to Rebecca, who he wasn't looking at in that scene. You mentioned Higgins. Let's talk about Higgins a little bit. Higgins, I love Higgins brings in this episode. He brings Will. Yeah, just Higgins is so funny this episode. And once again, a nice call back to him playing bass when he was let go from the team for those few weeks and he no, grew out he his quit. Oh, he quit. He, quit. That's he right. walked out that's, on the team that's because he right. didn't like what was going on. That's right. Um, and he, uh, yeah, he plays the uh, is the the bass. I mean, there's the yeah, electric the bass, bass, yeah, the bass, the stand up um, bass, yeah, yeah, stand up bass. And he's great at it, of course. And this is like he's in his element here. He feels so comfortable, and he's like, I love the fact that when he's getting ready to leave, like uh, he tells Rebecca and Keely, "We're going to the red light district." They look at each other. <laughs> nah, yeah. and the whole team does the exact. He said William's gonna become a man, and we're going to realize everyone looks. Nah, <laughs> did William actually go ahead and like have a threesome with that couple? He he tells his mom over the phone. It's like, yeah, they invited me for, for a threesome. <laughs> he's talking to his mom. Look, I, I, I don't, don't know Will. We barely know Will. I, I mean, maybe you know he's just open. I don't know. Well, he seemed uncomfortable. Then he seemed very uh like happy to be there and mm -hmm. then he made you know made contact with them and then he went ahead and actually went ahead and got higgins up on the stage yeah which right. was cool and he was enjoying it because higgins started talking when they were playing he's like no he like he said he shushed him yeah yeah he's like, and he higgins was enjoying the environment right which i mean that right there tells you those two are on a lot more of a same page than we would have ever guessed that's true. And it's like you wouldn't you wouldn't think that they would give uh, Higgins and Will, who we barely know as a character yet, this like nice little arc and this nice little story to enjoy throughout the episode. But they do like even they have like nice characterization beats together uh, throughout this episode. And we learn more, a lot more about Will than we have in any other. Episode. Yeah. Well, they go to see Chet Baker's death spot. Essentially. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The Memorial, the American uh, singer, musician. He said, well, he passed in May 13th of 88. And he said, they don't know if he was pushed or if he jumped out the window. He's like, are we going to solve that tonight? No. <laughs> Michelle says, Coach Beard said the acid was a dud. Is it possible Ted experienced the placebo effect? That's what I pulled from it. Yeah, yeah that like Ted, Ted was waiting for his mind to open up and because he was waiting for it. But I think what it was, too, is that he had a lot of things that triggered that in the American pub. Yeah, right? he almost had a, uh, a panic attack, which kind of came and gone real quick. Uh -huh. I didn't notice that. Yeah, it was, he almost did in the American oh, yeah, bar. Yeah, because all of a sudden the, the music started going like he was going to have one that they've been using. Yeah. And it, he cut out of it real quickly. And like he saw Nate's face so... I mean, it seemed like he was tripping. I don't know. <laughs> but the thing that really pushed him over the edge was the basketball. And he remembered watching basketball with his dad. And he and he 
eats the barbecue sauce, right? Yeah. At, from, from barbecue home. sauce. Yeah. Barbecue sauce, a dart, right? Um, so, you know, that really what set him over the edge. That's where we had that Spielbergian, you know, pullback and stuff. And Dude, uh, so that whole thing, the first thing that came to mind is I don't know how old everyone's watching. I don't even know if you remember, but do you remember? It was like early 90s, maybe the late 80s. Disney used to do these things all the time. And it was with a duck. It was a professor, was it a Ludwig Van Drake? Okay. And, it, and they used to always do this, and he would be talking, and Goofy would be doing whatever he's doing, or Donald oh, would be doing. Oh, I remember. Yeah, those those Disney shorts with Goofy were like, yeah, I think even when they explained the game of basketball and stuff, and there was that voiceover. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. So and it I, was all of those things. That was, they were the first yeah. things that actually came to mind. Yeah, and I think those were, I mean, I think those were based on something else, too, as far as just like old school um, little vignettes and videos that would maybe even show in theaters before a movie started or something. Um, but yeah, that was and they, it, the way it was done in that style. Like visually, we've never seen anything like this on a Ted Lasso show. Uh, so, and I put it in the thumbnail as far as just like seeing the inner workings of Ted's mind, like figuring things out. And um, yeah, it was it was kind of a trip. Well, speaking uh, of it a little bit, you want to go ahead and see a little bit of it? Yeah, yeah, let's take a look at that. Okay, here we go, guys. But the concept of the triangle reached its zenith in 1989 when a man called Tex Winter, an assistant coach for your Chicago Bulls, introduced his triangle offense. The central component of which was for a player to always have two available teammates to whom he could pass the ball. Hmm. These three players formed the triangle. Bingo, Ringo. But that was never the only triangle on the court. For when the players moved, they created more and more triangles. Hey, you're right. Right. Actually, Ted, you're right. <laughs> you're right, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are coming through tonight with the comments, and I appreciate it. So let me catch up here. Uh, Leah says, it seems the psychic's predictions have been taking Rebecca down memory lane of the men she dated, and then she'll reach her final destination slash family. Matchbox equals Sam, shite in knighting armor. Oh, this guy does kind of act like a knight in shining armor, the way you like just tell. Uh, okay, okay. So let's, let's follow that thread. So we have the matchbox. Now we have the shite in knighting armor. Mm -hmm. How does she wind up upside down? Because that was another part of it. it was upside down, and then you're going to be a mother. So, so there's, a four, there's four parts to that. Unless so you're falling, down, into the, falling off the bridge. Falling off the bridge, maybe? Oh, wait. When she actually fell off, did she yeah, fall off? Yeah, because she went did head she, over heels. Did she, did she flip over? Yeah. See, you know, that's another thing. Like, you know, falling for somebody head over heels. Oh, boy. A lot of, a lot of uh, connections here. Uh, Maynard says the same people who say that Rebecca will be with Ted are the same people who say that Ted will go back to the U S for his son. I just don't see Rebecca living in Kansas. Oh, that's interesting. That's a fair point. Maynard okay. like, yeah, Let's Rebecca's not going Ted to America. And Rebecca here for a minute because Ted is texting Rebecca. Sure. Like, over and over and over again. Which yeah. Call me off guard. It's like, I, I didn't, I didn't see that coming. I was like, where, where's this coming from? Right. Yeah. I don't know it, if yeah, I did notice it. Right. Like a part of me thinks that maybe it's not at a place because, you know, all the guys are busy and I, like you wouldn't really hang out with the team per se, but he was already with Beard. Maybe you think Rebecca would join them. But yeah, for maybe he started to worry about her as far as maybe she's typically, you know, responds quickly back to text or whatever. And she didn't respond at all all night long. And they're in a strange city. They're all by yeah. themselves. Like, it might have come from concern and not necessarily like, I wish you would be with me or something. You know what I mean? It might have just yeah. been like, I wonder if she's okay. <laughs> like, that kind of thing. I, I can buy that. I can take that. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Madeline says, Will was certainly staring at that couple a lot. Yeah. Seemed to be. Well, and then she and stared she, at him. She kind of gave him the head nod. She kind of yeah. like, she kind of acknowledged him, so he he may have had an interesting evening. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe Higgins was involved. Nah, nah. nah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Amber says, "I agree. Rebecca would not go to Kansas, but I don't think Ted will stay. Not long term. Uh, it's too hard for him to leave his son for too long." Yeah, I agree with that. But what if his ex-wife moved there? Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't Maybe... see that beat either. No, never mind. That came yeah. out of my mouth before I was even really thought about it. So. <laughs> Uh, Leah says, yeah, Ted knows that he needs to get back to his son. 
Amber, I very much enjoyed Piggy Stardust. Beard has such an, an eclectic life. <laughs> and I love how that juxtaposes with the straight man character. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It's funny because on the surface, Beard is just like kind of no nonsense, very knowledgeable, like yeah. a better coach, kind of kind of a better coach than Ted. Like Ted has all the life lessons, but as far as the game, <laughs> like Coach Beard is the one that you would go to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, combine that and contrast that with his personal life, and it's like crazy. Um, Madeline says, looks like he's tripping balls to me. Basketballs. <laughs> Thank you, Madeline. Dude, what, okay. That. So let's you know what? It's in the whole next segment of our show. So I'm not even gonna get there. All right, we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh Maynard says, Who else is he gonna hang out with? Oh, as far as Ted and Rebecca. Um, yeah, that's a fair point. There's uh, you know, the team's team was pretty busy. Shite and Knighting Armor was the ex that is now getting married. Sorry, I ran out of characters before. Right, yeah, he was a sh he was a shite, I guess. Right, um, I feel like Ted and Rebecca are more like brother and sister rather than couple material. Uh, yeah, there's I a lot of folks that. out there that I, I ship don't want it. a couple from this. Either. Yeah, I don't. I don't want a couple material. I, I don't want a couple out of them either. And finally, here, uh, Madeline says Ted and Rebecca are friends. Sassy is Rebecca's best friend, so Ted is off the table for Becca anyway. Oh, that's right. Yeah, um, Ted Sassy's been a uh, wounded bird. Fair point. Yeah. Let's go ahead uh, and, and uh, okay, we've got another one. We got you guys are coming. Uh, you guys are coming through. I'm telling you, absolutely. Rebecca and Ted have a really good sibling style relationship. There's no romance there. Sassy's fair game because it's his sister's friend, and they met without Rebecca's introduction. Uh, Maynard says, "Here's what I don't get. It appears that being reminded of home helped Ted. Right? Are we supposed to believe that Ted never went back to Kansas for two and a half years? Oh, that's that's a fair point. Like it." what's the off season look like for Richmond AFC? It's how long much. is that? It, okay. Uh, when we look at it as in American sports, there's yeah. a long off season. Right. And European football. If you're watching this and you know a little more of the, the way the season runs, uh, go ahead and drop a comment below. If you're watching live, go ahead and do six. I, I may be a little off, but it's a lot shorter because that's one of okay. the gripes. Like when uh, we had here in the U S we had a, a coach of the U S men's national team and he was, I uh, was Jurgen Klinsmann. I think he was German. Mm -hmm. His biggest gripe about the MLS is there's so much off season. So it takes them so long to get back into game form or game shape uh, to play. European teams don't have as much of an off season. So they're constantly ready to go. Yeah. So I can, I can believe he didn't go back for a long period of time. I don't think he would not go back period. I think there'd be a period of time where he'll be able to go ahead and go back. I just don't, not not like a off season like an NFL, uh, MLS. I'll use that baseball, MLB. You know hockey, all those here in American sports wise. ML uh, NBA. Uh, there's a much shorter condensed time. Mm -hmm. uh, Amber concurs. I guess Euro football goes a lot longer, closer to American baseball. Um, plus that time off. I I thought wasn't Henry there with him like during some sort of time off. Yeah. Like that's as as opposed to Ted going back. Henry shipped. Like Henry went came there to him. rather than yeah because I, th I mean that makes sense because that way Ted can be closer to the team in case he still has responsibilities doing... even though it's yeah. the season, he still has things he needs to handle so right. he wouldn't have as much time uh Kate says it's a couple of months and that it makes sense because I think Henry was there for like six weeks or so so um yeah um so we've kind of touched on Ted let's just talk about Ted's journey throughout this episode here um, you know, he doesn't partake in the tea at first, right? Yeah. Um, at oh, first I was like, come on, man, like poop inside a smoothie of barf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh. Um, I was like, he knows what beard gets up to. Right. And right. I know that Ted would be hesitant to do that, but Ted's also confessed to Beard that, like, hey, I'm in a spot now where I just want to, like, you know, I need to try open up my new. mind. All right, yeah. And if if they're boys, and I feel like they're boys, wouldn't he just like go at that drink? But he really did hesitate. But he, he eventually did take it I after Beard was long gone. So Beard doesn't after know Beard if he ever gone. did it or not. Yeah. So we got, um, I'm gonna say this wrong here. Arano, a month and a half of training. The new season starts. Yeah, I knew it was really condensed. Really. Oh sure. wow. Compared yeah. to you know, MLS, I'm, I'm going to use that for example because I'm a huge, you know, Columbus Crew fan here in MLS. So right, but I know that was the biggest gripe of the U.S. men's national team, who was German, about the two different types of players and different types of the world. 
Amber says another point here, and his divorce, it doesn't make sense for Ted to go back for six weeks. Where would he even stay? I know his his old home is not his home anymore. <laughs> Sad yeah, to no, say. He's the... Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, creepy 0812, most of May and all of June. That's it. There we go. Well, well thanks uh, for joining us, Creepy. Your first yeah. time. I know Arreno, it's a, your first time as well of seeing your comments here. Uh, thanks for joining the family here. And, uh, you know, yeah, chime talk, in whenever you have Ted. something to actually add to the com- uh, the conversation. Yeah, appreciate it. Talking Ted here. And Ted's the last one we're focused on. I mean, we kind of like uh, talked about it here and there. As far as like going forward, I feel like Ted's arc here has more of a um, more of a long lasting outcome as far as the development of the team going forward. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, As far as just like this is what I wanted and needed from Ted. I need Ted to like do some coaching, (laughs) be the manager. The Zaba thing. Zaba brought Jamie and Roy closer. Zavin has now pushed Ted into a spot where he needed to try something new, which yeah. then led to his, you know, sitting there looking at, you know, the Vincent Van Gogh paintings and they go yeah. into that terrible American bar, which man, it, if that's what they think of us, man, we are, ooh, that's rough. That was probably pretty accurate. Yeah. With, uh, <laughs> I mean, the Howdy partners and stuff. And they had the Australians oh, in there. That the was Windy funny. City. He's like, I'll go, he did, I'll go to Chicago. <laughs> Where the Windy <laughs> City, <laughs> like, yeah. oh no, that was yeah. also rough. Your Chicago Bulls, that it, I mean, it was fun. Hey, I'd eat there, I would want to try actually legit Amsterdam stuff before that, <laughs> but I think it would be interesting to sit in what Europeans consider to be an American style restaurant yeah, because they come here all the time, they go to like British pubs and everything just to see, you know, yeah, how exactly. we see their food. So, right. if we go there and kind of do the exact same thing, it, it's would have to. Yeah, Yankee Doodle Burger Barn. That is funny. It had two point um, five was two point five two point seven <laughs> stars out of five. Yeah, so you know it's middle road. <laughs> sure. Were there pens um, that had the multiple ink on them that don't have to buy a new one off? <laughs> yeah. So okay, so Ted he sees Nate first of all. So that's a little leeway to know that we, he has Nate on the brain at least a little yeah. bit, right? It's bothering him. Um, the pyramid, the whole talk about triangles and the up uh, th- wasn't the upside down pyramid well, a thing like a pyramid book? was the uh, or the yeah, the, the reverse pyramid was the season finale of last season, yeah. So that comes back into play here as far as just uh, I guess it was a book he was reading too, it was like uh, something yeah, that Beard yeah, had because Beard was reading it and then he yeah. picked it up this season at one point and said, right. I couldn't even get through like the, the, you know, the beginning of the book. He's like, I got like two or three pages into it, I was like, I'm gonna give this back to you. So I think it was a combination between just the memories of his dad having uh, reconnecting with his American roots a little bit. Maybe he's been outside of his home in America for so long. He's kind of lost touch with that a little bit, even internally. Yeah. And even though it was cheesy, you know, the stuff was like way overblown. Just having some barbecue sauce. (laughs) Yeah. Some onion rings and barbecue sauce transformed him a little bit and opened him up. I mean, yeah, the onion rings that were a pyramid. Yeah, you know, the three different triangles, all that. Everything's triangles. You have, you know, uh, taking inspiration the from the... On, the on the wall with the three on his hat. Yes, that's right. And the whole thing you mentioned earlier, we're talking about the Chicago Bulls and their um, uh, the 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 kind of effort that they had during their winning seasons with Jordan and stuff. Yeah, they, always, they, um, they, were, they were they basically were the original team that started running the triangle within the NBA. Yeah, which was very very successful for him. Right. Nine so anything or something. <laughs> and it's funny because it's like a, as I was looking at the basketball court, it really reminded me of the soccer pitch, like as far as just like the the dynamics and the shapes and the circles and where the, they are placed in the rectangle and stuff. And I think we're made to ma- make that connection. Like this is something that Ted can move forward on. And Beard even confirms it when he gets back on the bus. Like, I want to run something by you. I don't, tell me if this is something that we should do. And yeah. Beard's all for it. He's like, we should do this. Well, he's like, did you come up with this? And he's like. <laughs> I mean, first he was shocked, right? And you know, then he, you know, Ted was like talking about like fluidness and movement and constantly going. As long as people yeah. are filling in behind each other, uh, the 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 idea of positions is no longer relevant. Yeah. Now, as a soccer person, you no, know, you need to keep your back line, your back line, but your midfield because a lot of teams play what they call a, the diamond formation, which mm-hmm. your midfielders. It's more of a diamond setup, exactly what it sounds like, and you got your you know. You're attacking, you know, you're nine or your 10 or wherever you want to play them. So they already kind of play that in that aspect. So if they can do that and keep their, their back line the way they are, it can it can work. 
Um, and I think that's important because this will allow the team to start having some wins moving forward. Yes. Yeah, so and need, I think we need, them, we need them in bunches now. Yeah, because as far as like story wise, we need the team to be competitive. And when we're hurtling towards the end of the season, we need to be them in play as far as the top tier of teams uh, in the league. Right. And I think this is yeah. what helps get them there. We got a bunch of comments here. Let's go and catch up on some of these comments. We do, yeah. So Amber says, first Zava pushed Ted out, and then Henry unintentionally pushed Ted into his own head. He's back now. Thank goodness. We need him. Oh, as far as Ted being... I know. We need Ted back, right? He's been so all over the place. And for him to be like... uh, Bringing his American history and like the Chicago... Bring the Chicago Bulls to a a Richmond AFC. You know what I mean? That's cool. the Ted smile. At the end, yes, when right. he was sitting in the bus and everyone when they were singing, yeah, Ted, that 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 Pat and Ted smile on the back that he's yeah. happy. We right. haven't seen in a while. Uh, Maynard says, "I like that the show made Ted come out with actual techniques and strategies, mm-hmm. right? More realistic than the team will suddenly start winning just because some inspiring speeches and team bonding experiences, uh, right? If you're able to have all three of those things, I would and like some to new see techniques. some of the things on the training pitch." Them yeah. kind of working on this, yeah, and seeing how it works, and actually going to both Beard and Roy. This is what we're working on. This is what we want yeah. to do. How, how are we going to implement this? I, I like could use a montage. That. That's oh, what a I want. I want montage? A montage. Oh, I love a good training yeah, montage. I love a good. I montage. almost put a bike riding montage together, guys. <laughs> That's how much we love montages. <laughs> uh, I don't think we've really seen one in Ted Lasso yet. That was, it was perfect time for one. Would be now. Um, Leah says, "I was so happy to finally see Ted focus on how his team can win." I was starting to think that he should he that he should get fired. Right. We just had the conversation. Well, almost. <laughs> we almost had the conversation. Yeah, well, getting close. Recently. Yeah. Uh, Arno says Dutch expat here. Oh, awesome. Uh, the song Three Little Birds is very important. Ajax reference. Writer team knows since they all lived in Amsterdam. Oh, I did not know that. Oh, nice. That that makes a lot of sense that the writing team has history there. Yeah. Because this almost this episode almost felt like a love letter to Amsterdam. Um, Amber says, as a kid in the Chicago suburbs in the nineties, I can appreciate the bulls Jordan references. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, you know, oh, you and I were not Ohio? in the Chicago area. Uh, LeBron's the goat. <laughs> I'm just messing with everybody. <laughs> Don't mess. Well, you and I were from New Jersey in the nineties, but yeah. I mean, Jordan and the bulls were like prevalent, even they, yeah, you know, they ran everywhere. Shot over everybody. <laughs> yeah. Um, Kate says, and the pyramid of onion rings. Yeah. yeah. I could go, I could go for a pyramid of onion rings right now. Um, Arno is Three Little Birds, the anthem for AFC Ajax. Um, they even put Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon in yes. there. Did you see I the rainbow? Notice. No, no. Yeah, Dor- Doran actual, uh, the montage, not montage, but the whole in Ted's mind, when they're going around, right before they put the actual basketball court on, the yeah. rainbow shoots across the screen. Oh, I missed that. Yeah, I'll have to check that out again. I mean, I'll have to replay our own clip and, and take oh, a look. Oh, I don't think it's in our clip. Oh, okay. All right. I think it's because I only got about 30 seconds to play with before, you know, the <laughs> YouTube police say, you know, yeah. bad, bad. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, thanks for clarifying, Arno. They even have uh, Rasta football kit. And sorry, Chris, jewelry is the goal. And both Jordan and <laughs> I Pippen knew I was going to poke somebody. <laughs> well, you did it. You poked. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't even mean it's funny. <laughs> All in all, hey, we covered the gambit as far as the characters and their crazy night in Amsterdam this episode. Uh, but man, big stuff. What a great episode. This was fantastic. Uh, yeah. Like I said, definitely a top five for me. Absolutely. Yeah. At least top five. And it, it could be one of the, my, my favorite episodes, period, because every time I watch it, I'm catching something new. I'm still yeah. laughing at the same things I seen the first time. Right. So if you're continuously laughing at the same joke, it's funny. So, I mean, the red light district, nah. <laughs> that by itself, uh, the pillow fights, the uh, the whole the uh, oh, the we didn't even talk about the two like they weren't waitresses, but they worked at the hotel. Like, yeah, maybe they were waitresses. They never come out. Oh yeah, yeah. And they were and like, th- "Do you want to go see two tired people, or do you want to go try to get some yourself?" <laughs> I know that was funny too. They were like bringing some uh, hard truths there to uh, to well, Van Dam. He goes by not Zorro. Van Dam. Yeah, yeah, all in all, great episode. I can't wait to see where we go from here, honestly, because I think I feel like Amsterdam is a turning point for a lot of not only the team and their success on the pitch, but like 
all their personal characters. This was an episode, and, and they set it up perfect. Yeah, because I think even uh, uh, they made a pineapple reference. I don't remember exactly between Beard and you know Ted the beginning of it, but when he set them free, go get out of your own head. Yeah, go relax, go have fun, and then come back to me at 10 a.m. Pretty much saying, ready to go, get everything right. out of your system. We need to turn the ship around. Yeah, and uh, that was that was. I mean, that was awesome. I liked how they did that. Can't poke the bear or bull in this case. <laughs> uh, this episode blew me away. Uh, tulipo, tulip. uh, yeah, just, I would love to. I just love one to tulip, tulips. a whole field I, would be overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with Danny. I want to go see him. Uh, this chat analysis has been brilliant. Yeah, thanks y'all for really kind of showing up this chat here. Uh, don't forget to give the thumbs up. We we love that, Leah. Thanks so much. That yeah, would be great anytime if y'all you guys could. can give us a thumbs up. Any if you can go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, share. Let other people know. I mean, we love this community. We love growing this community. Yeah. Uh, if you look at other things on our channel, we do a lot, but we get the most love from Ted. I mean, we'll be real. You guys are amazing. So thank you. Yeah, and of course we're going to be back next week, uh, most likely Wednesday. I'm pretty sure. You know, next Wednesday, uh, we'll be here to talk about uh, the seventh episode of season three of Ted Lasso. But um, before we go, I told Amber. Oh, you did. I'm gonna go ahead and read that, this comment. You? Yeah. So she went ahead and put a comment on there on last week's episode. It says one last thing: never apologize. It says sorry. I can finally deflate Sean's desire to see Sassy die in order to make <laughs> Rebecca a mom. See, I don't know you I don't actually desire it, but you know we all hate the idea. I could, it couldn't even work. Why, you ask? Sassy has an ex-husband, a.k.a. the daughter's dad. He would get oh, Rebecca. Right. He would get Rebecca. You get, get custody over Rebecca. Right, right, right. I and didn't then, think Yeah, that. it goes on. But yeah, it's, it's That's like, yep, funny. no, that wouldn't, it wouldn't even work. The ex-husband would get the custody of a sassy daughter. I was pretty clear that I did not want it to happen, but it is something that's just popped up in my head as I was watching that episode. You were you were speaking it too <laughs> much was... into the world. <laughs> I did put that, it out in the universe, I guess. We had, yeah, you're we right. had to shut it down as much as we could. And yeah. Amber went ahead and slammed that door. It was like, you know what? Boom. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's enjoying that. You got it. There you go. Okay. Um, thank you all so much for joining us tonight. Come back next week as we talk episode seven. We'd love to have you back. And of course, keep on leaving comments. Uh, share it. If you are like on a Ted Lasso Facebook page or something or anywhere else you talk about Ted Lasso, uh, share our uh, YouTube channel, share our video. Uh, we'd love to bring as many people on as we can. And you, I mean, we try our best to bring up every comment, honestly. It's not yeah. like one of those shows with a super chat or whatever. Like if oh, you're yeah. leaving a comment here, we're going to try our best to bring it up. There we um, go. But yeah, until then, what do you say? Believe? Uh, let's go ahead and believe. See ya.